Welcome back guys. Today we'll be creating the kitchen salt, uh, kitchen YAML file, I'm sorry, the kitchen YAML file for the user state. Now, this method is to test the individual state. Uh, we will run into issues if we include multiple states in the one individual state, then it will be a problem. However, that's for vagrant configuration to handle, not the individual kitchen states to handle. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go ahead and create a .kitchen YAML file in the user state. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I've got my uh, I've got my users state pulled up here, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and create a .kitchen YAML file here. So we'll name this as it is, but we're going to go ahead and, and follow most of the uh, most of the examples here uh, in this in this particular uh, link. This is the provisioner options. Uh, I do notice that there are some errors here. For example, the bootstrap URL, uh, this is not a correct URL. It should be .com, not .org. And we do have to use some of these options as we're not using the default Ubuntu Kitchen Salt uh, VM because we're using CentOS instead. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go ahead and create the, uh, create the .kitchen YAML file to provide for CentOS. So first of all, this should be in every, um, because we're using Vagrant, this should be in every uh, driver or every kitchen YAML file that we create. So we definitely need that. We also need a provisional. Oops, let me go ahead and set that to the correct syntax. Provisioner, uh, we will name provisioner, it has to be named salt solo because it uses a salt solo driver. And from there on, we need to provide some of these other optional optional options, I'm sorry, some of these other options. Now, they're not the same options that we will be providing. These are just examples. So for example, the formula here, we're we don't have a formula. Um, so it's going to go ahead and init, or sorry, this, um, it's going to go ahead and, and inherit this user salt state as the formula. So we don't have to provide anything there. Uh, the next thing we want to do is in the user state file, we have the init.sls, but this init.sls pulls the data from the pillar admin users. Um, so it needs to pull this data. However, we're never gonna, we don't wanna provide actual live uh, data into this, into this test kitchen in, uh, environment. We wanna pull in, we wanna pull in fake data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create another directory that says, or sorry, not the file, another directory and name it test pillar in the, in the state directory. So test pillar, and we'll create the test pillar in there in a little bit later. Or so, yeah, the, the pillar information in there a little bit. All right, so another thing to know is that, okay, we're definitely gonna be using this top, the top file, excuse me, this top file, and then we're gonna provide it the, oops, get my tabbing right. So it's gonna be running users. But it doesn't know what users is, so we need to name this collection users. So if you see state collection here, we need to provide the name for this particular collection, which is the name for the state that it's going to run, users. So, like so. I believe that's, let me double check. Yep. So, oh, I'm sorry, state collection is two and the collection name is users. This is a Boolean. True collection name users. Just like how it has in the uh, in the example here, collection name log rotate. I guess we don't have to provide it a list, so we won't provide it a list. We'll just say users. Um, okay, so now that we got the collection taken care of, we also need to feed in the pillars, but just a moment. I believe this is all we need. We don't because we've got the collection name. We've got the state collection. We're gonna put in pillars in a second. Um, oh, we do need to change the uh, URL because it's not the correct URL. So this, uh, I already submitted a GitHub request to go ahead and change that. Um, so hopefully by the time you watch this video, that will be changed. However, this is entirely. Uh, 
correct. You don't need the code, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that and change that from .org to .com. Also, we want to use the salt version being latest. And we also want to bootstrap. These are, these are default options, so we, you don't have to worry about it uh, too much, but I like to make sure my options are visible to me. Bootstrap. All right, so we've got the bootstrap. We can change the log level if we run into errors. So if salt gives us any issues, then we'll change the log level from info to debug, and hopefully we'll be able to find out what's wrong with the state. Um, but we don't need anything else as far as I know. Let's see, minion config, we'll let kitchen worry about that. And everything here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the, the test pillars. So here we'll have, uh, we'll have the same sort of pillar uh, that we do uh, in our environment, our actual production environment. But what we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead and change the name. Uh, and any sort of uh, information. So it's still going to be called admin users. So uh, we'll do YAML. Actually, we'll do salt state uh, admin users. And then paste all of that. There we go. This needs to be tabbed. One in. Yep. So that's all indented. Okay. So we will now we will go ahead. Oops, my times are, not, are still not correct. Maybe one out. There we go. All right, so anything that says David Gonzalez, we will go ahead and change to fake user. And this will be fake user one. And the rest of this will be fake Q1. All right, so Tony Montana. Oh, this will be fake user two. And of course, this key is fake Q2. All right, so we'll name this users.sls. Now, we created a file technically. We could have provided this um, we could have provided this information in the .kitchen YAML file. However, I don't like having so much information in the .kitchen YAML file because it creates too much clutter. So I, I, like, I, like to, I want to pull it in from a file, and that's what, we, what we're going to do here. So what we're, we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and list these two dictionary keys, um, but let's start with pillars from file. So on pillars from file, let's go ahead and put that. Let's get that there. All right. And if I look at the example here, I believe it is pillars from file dictionary key, and then it's got another dictionary key and the example file. So we're going to have uh, users.sls, and it's going to be in test pillar. It reads from the directory that which the kitchen YAML file belong in, which it's when I say this, it's going to belong in the users directory. So I can just go ahead and read from there and test pillar and users.sls. All right. So from there on, we need to include the pillar. Um, so we need, uh, as we did with our production environment, we had to create the top.sls for the pillar. We need to do the same thing here. So top.sls, and we have. Um, the excuse me, the environment which is base star and the uh, pillar that we want to create, which we named it here uh, users.sls. Or sorry, here the key is user.sls. So we'll name it user. In the top file, you don't have to provide the .sls name exactly. So that should be. Oops, it needs to be named .kitchen. And be careful when you name it; it's YML, not YAML. Yes, use the dot if you're using this uh, sublime text. All right, so that's my file there. So now that I've got that there, it should go ahead and read everything. We should be okay. All right, so now do, uh, where am I? 
Oh yes, I created those two files. I need to make sure that this dot vagrant is ignored uh, when I commit this. So now let's go to my base directory users. And okay, so I've got my dot kitchen file there. Now I should do the kitchen list. Oops, uh, why not? It says try regex instead. I maybe misspelled something. Oh, I forgot a sweet. I'm sorry. Sweet uh, default. Will that work? I believe it will. Sweets. Oh, it's S and it's name default. Okay, so let me change that. Name default. All right, so oh, I've got trailing slash there. I think that's it. I've got the driver, the provisioner, and the suites, which is exactly what I need. Driver, provisioner. Oh, I do need a platforms. I, that's right. Can't believe I forgot the platforms. Um, so the platform is going to be. CentOS uh, 6, I believe it's CentOS 6. Let me double check. It's, it's CentOS hyphen 6.9. So hyphen 6.9, and that should be it. Now, if I do a kitchen list, I should see, no, it says one or more instances, try regex, my kitchen list. It's finding a regex error somewhere. So I didn't manage to figure this out. It's because my suites were first, they weren't there, and second, I, did, I had it tabbed over, so it was under provisioner, which is not supposed to be the case. Um, that was a quick fix. Glad I got that. And as you can see, I ran kitchen list and it ran fine. So let me run it again just for good measure. And there we go. So now, if I do kitchen converge, oops, there it is. So if I do a kitchen converge, it should go ahead and download and install. Um, the salt packages from yum rather than pip, which we're okay with that because this is just testing. So let's go ahead and download and install salt from yum and test our uh, user state, which it will pull the data in from the uh, pull the data in from the um, excuse me pull the data in from the pillar that we provided. This might take a while, but I do want to wait a few seconds uh, just to make sure that I don't run into any errors. As soon as it starts, uh, go ahead and running in, running yum. I'll go ahead and pause this video and restart. All right, so it's setting the host name. So far, so good. Now you might uh, recognize that this is going to install some chef, chef stuff. Uh, there is an error. I was hoping that there wouldn't be an error. So undefined method each for nil class sent to us 6.9. Ah, I see what I've done. Let's see. So I've got pillar instead of pillars. That should be pillars. And this needs to be a list, just like how it is in state top. So now let's go ahead and try kitchen converge. Um, destroy everything first. And then we'll do a kitchen converge. So I know our previous converge failed, but it still created the VM. So I want to go ahead and make sure that that VM is destroyed before I do a converge. There we go. All right, so now we should see it, as I said before, we should see it install salt via yum in this particular output. We don't have to provide any sort of output level uh, to see that. So once we get that rolling, I want to go ahead and pause the video again. Uh, sync and then restart it and sync up with you when I run the state or when the state has ran automatically It should run the state automatically upon boot and we should see the results almost immediately So let's see. Let's see what it does It's creating it's got the VM and it's creating the SSH key and it places in some temporary directory And it's the keys inserted setting the host name this, for some reason, this takes a while. Um, it can take a while, actually, sorry. All right, there we go, see? Now, if you get into the green info and it's saying that it's installing um, Salt and CentOS and all that other stuff, that means you're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause here 
This can take a while, and then I'm going to go ahead and restart with the results. Okay, so uh, our state did run. It did create the users. If you look, it says, you know, user fake, create, fake user one, create a fake user one with fake user key, and so on and so on. And same thing with fake user two. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate uh, where to find the state in Kitchen and the log files to uh, look for salt log files, and, I'm sorry, in Kitchen to look for when you have issues. So uh, let's do Kitchen login. Uh, it's just like the Chef Kitchen or Chef Test Kitchen. So you will need to become root for some of the directories. Um, so the Kitchen salt state and pillar files are in temp uh, kitchen and then you should see SRV and ETC. The configuration for salt is an ETC, and you will find everything here for the configuration for salt, just like how we have it in ETC salt in, in our production instances. Um, however, I want to show where the oops, uh, temp slash kitchen slash SRV, I want to show the state exactly. So the state is in the salt directory, and then we have uh, users. So if you look at the top.sls, it's just as we provided in our kitchen YAML, which is this here. Um, so anything in state top gets included. And if you look at the if you look at the um, if, excuse me, if you look at the init.sls, or sorry, the whole users directory, it copies over our our directory over here rather than just the init.sls. So we can find our pillar here, but we can also find it in, in temp kitchen pillar uh, as well. So the one that took effect is the one that's in temp kitchen pillar. It was just copied here because we placed it here. Uh, I like to keep everything as local as possible and then, and then go from there. So our init.sls, it just has our uh, user, sorry, our, our for loop to iterate through the pillar. So this is our pillar, uh, temp kitchen, let's see, uh, SRV. Oops. Uh, just as we provided in the pillar top.sls. And if you look, if you look at the user.sls, it's got our, it's got our contents of the user.sls that we provided from this particular file. Okay, so that's how a test kitchen is done on an individual instance. Uh, we'll be doing more test kitchen and more pillars uh, in a little bit. We'll also be messing with grains as well. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use grains, um, just setting grains and using grains for individual states and so on. And we'll be testing those out with pillars as well, or with kitchen as well, as well as the vagrant that we've created. There is one caveat here to note is that whenever you include a, a uh, which I haven't shown just yet, but whenever you include a state from another state, it will not work because that state will not be found locally. Uh, because this, this kitchen YAML is only for this particular state, not for any other state. So if you wanted to do that, then you want to place this kitchen YAML in the root of this directory. Uh, where all the base uh, states exist, and that's I'll go ahead and go over that next time with the uh, with the grains as well. All right, so thank you for watching. Uh, hope to guys see you next time.